Hi everyone, it's been a little while since I installed solar PV panels on the house, so I thought I'd give you an update today. I installed the solar PV around the 7th of January this year, and it's now, what, uh, second week of March, so I've had it a couple of months now, and I actually think uh, installing it the winter has been the best time for me, because I've seen it at its worst case, and... If I can be happy with it in its worst case, then it's just getting better and better and better. And uh, my impression of the solar PV so far is a really positive one. I really missed a couple of things with it. I, I didn't really understand what it would be like owning solar PV on the house. Um, I'm not the sort of person that just um, bolts something onto the house and then forgets all about it completely. It's... It's a part of it. It's, a, it's, a, it's like putting a conservatory on. Um, I don't take it for granted. I appreciate it. And the solar PV is exactly the same. Just like owning an electric car, it's fun. Um, and I didn't appreciate how much fun it really is. Um, is that for everyone? Uh, probably not. Some people won't be thinking about the price and some people won't be thinking about the cost savings and the uh, analysis of when to maximise uh, the amount of solar that you're getting and how to use it, all those sort of things. But I suppose for those sort of people that aren't thinking about it, they probably don't install solar anyway because they haven't taken the time to think about it. If you're thinking about solar, you're, you're somewhere <laughs> similar to myself that you're thinking about the cost of things, you're thinking about the cost of electricity in the future, you're considering the environment, you want to generate your own electricity, your energy. If you're going to be going on an electric car or you've already got one, then it's excellent for obviously providing cheaper fuel into your car. So if you're already on the mindset, then you're just like myself and it is fun. There's no doubt about it. The feeling of switching on a kettle and seeing zero on your smart meter that you're not consuming any energy is great fun. And the first few weeks I got it, yeah, I was experimenting with how much energy each device is using. And it's not to try and save energy, but it's a consequence of knowing, well, if it's cloudy, but the weather forecast is for it to brighten up, then Shall I just delay doing this? <laughs> Shall I just pop out to the shops now so that when I get back, I can then do the baking or the cooking or the the whatever to um, maximise the use of the solar? And it is surprising for me how the analysis um, takes over. And yeah, I find it fun and I find it interesting, not just to try and maximise the solar, but uh, it is just a positive when you see that you're doing things, you're utilising lots of electricity, but <laughs> units at the end of the day, you're not using very many units of electricity. So on to usage, what am I consuming now and what have I noticed the differences? Well, I've seen the darkest, um, cloudiest, rainy days and you can tell that solar is not generating a lot of electricity at all. So maybe it's generating three or four kilowatt hours during the day. And that's, you know, it's not a lot, but it's, you know, even in the worst situation, it's potentially 100 watts or 200 watts. Times that by 10 hours of daylight, you know, you're getting one to two kilowatt hours of electricity generation. So does it save you much money in those situations? Well, not a lot. Um, it ticks over with a couple of lights, your television on, your, your router and your fridge, and that's about it in the darkest winter, horrible days. So on those worst days... There's not a lot of savings, and there's certainly not enough energy to put into your hot water system. Not for me, on my 3.9 uh, kilowatt P, the peak power output of it, and I have a 3.6 kilowatt uh, inverter, so any power I generate above 3.6, it's going to be, I think the term is clipped, it's going to be reduced down to 3.6, so that's the most I can actually get use of. On some days I see 100, 200 watts of generation and that's, you know, awful because of how dark it is. But on a uh, normal brighter day, um, probably even with heavy cloud and uh, a dull day, there's still enough to generate five, six, seven hundred watts of electricity, which isn't enough to power a lot of devices just on its own. But the fact that if you're putting, say, a kettle on, which is two kilowatts, and you've got a 500 watt generation at the time, then you're saving a quarter of the electricity. It's, it's a quarter of that being saved. So it's all good. It all reduces your costs, and it's very good fun. But what I'm enjoying is the days are getting longer. And what I'm noticing is when the sun is out, you get to see uh, the two up to three and a half, 3.6 kilowatts. And I have seen the maximum of 3.6 uh, on the system already in February. 
But as the daylight expands, uh, I'm seeing more and more. So it's getting to that peak and it's staying there for a longer period of time. And the maximum amount that uh, I'm generating in a day is increasing. You know, first I started to see 14, then 16, then 18. And the highest I've seen so far is 20 kilowatt hours, 20 units of electricity a day. And again, that's in February when the day isn't that long. And what I'm definitely noticing is on the best days, by 8, 8.30, there's almost, almost enough to be generating into the car. You know, I'm getting a good 1.3 to 1.5 first thing in the morning. And that's just getting earlier and earlier and longer and longer. So as the days draw out and there's more daylight, what I'm finding is uh, there's more capability of charging the car and more capability of heating the hot water on top of just powering the house and reducing your electricity costs. So during peak winter, I would imagine in the worst days, instead of being able to charge your car, or instead of being able to heat your hot water, what you can do is contribute towards that. So instead of paying the full cost of the electricity into the car, or the full cost of heating your hot water on an immersion, if that's what you choose to do, then uh, it's gonna subsidize it by whatever percentage um, the amount of sun that you're actually obtaining. For it to really cost justify to you, you need to be able to utilize that. So if you're out all day, you're going to need some way of automatically capturing that energy from the sun and utilizing it. For me, we're at home quite a lot. So we're generating uh, electricity during the day in the sunlight hours, but consuming it also because we're baking, cooking, doing those things during the day because we're there. And also uh, I'm heating the hot water through solar. At the moment, I'm not using the um, my energy device, uh, the Eddy. I'm not using that yet. Uh, I've got a, a small issue with my Zappy and I'm waiting until that's resolved before I consider how to go forward with heating my hot water. So at the moment, uh, I have to walk out into the garage, turn a switch and turn it on manually. I'm, I'm considering putting a, a Wi-Fi switch in so I can wirelessly turn that switch on and off from inside the house. But it's no big deal. Um, if I'm charging the car or we're busy cooking, I don't turn the hot water on. But when we get to a point in time where uh, there's not a lot going on, and if there's enough sunlight, I'll go outside and flick the switch and turn the hot water on and we'll have free hot water. And that's working out really well for me. Uh, so we're in the middle of March now. I've probably gone over a month now without using the oil boiler at all for heating because it's been uh, nice weather. But also I've been having the log burner on to supplement instead of burning oil. And the hot water has been completely from solar and electricity. And cost wise, yeah, um, my electricity consumption, including adding some charging to the car, my bills, I anticipated I was going to be paying about £56 a month on electricity. I've come down to about £30, £31 a month at the moment. And this is still winter time. And I'm heating my hot water, so I've increased that usage. And I'm charging some on the electric car. Not a lot, I must confess. Um, I'm still charging for free out on a public charger. But uh, I am charging at home on solar. How much is the question? Um, to heat my hot water, uh, I've got a 170 litre tank and it doesn't seem to be the most efficient immersion heater. It's probably covered in lime scale. It's probably taking me a good six, six kilowatt hours, six units of electricity to heat, reheat my hot water every day. So I need my immersion on for two hours a day. But instead of paying for six units of electricity, I'm typically only paying for one, two or three. That's all I'm consuming out of that for my hot water so at a unit price of 13.5 pence per kilowatt hour and i'm using let's say on average three to heat my hot water it's costing me 39 pence 40 pence a day to heat my hot water i think that's a lot less than the oil i've been consuming so there's a good saving there and it makes me feel good not using the boiler not using the oil to heat my hot water so as soon as i can get some automated method of timed hot water heating or automatic moving the surplus of solar to heat the hot water the better um, because at the moment I'm not maximizing it there's a lot of time where um, if I'm generating 500 to say 900 watts of electricity from the solar that it's not enough to charge the car it's uh, not quite enough to be heating the hot water so I basically don't have anything using that electricity and it's going out to the grid if I had something like the Eddy, it would automatically be diverting any surplus into the immersion heater, not heating it very quickly, but it would be at least putting the energy into the water. 
how much can I charge the car? How many kilowatt hours can I get into the car? So far in the, the best days in February, including heating my hot water, I'm able to put 10 to 15% extra into the Kona Electric. So I am adding six to eight kilowatt hours in a day. On the best days, I'm adding 12, 14 or more kilowatt hours. And that equates to between 10 and 15% of energy back into the Kona Electric's battery. And for me, that's working out really well. Uh, it's a really odd feeling that uh, we go out for a drive, uh, drop Charlotte back to school, and that costs us about 43 miles in, in the car. And yet we come back and uh, put it on charge, and it's added 20 or 30 miles back to the car. It's It seems rather odd that every time we're popping out for these short trips, we're getting those miles back again from solar. So even in February, um, I'm not popping out to the uh, public charger because I'm getting the car charged on solar. And I'm doing it on the Eco Plus settings on the Zappi, so I'm not using the grid energy. I'm trying to charge just from solar. So if I really wanted to charge the car and wanted to uh, fill it up, I can. I can stick it on a different Eco mode so that basically I'm using all the surplus energy and charging the card continuously so even when there's not enough sun it still keeps charging anyway using whatever's there i can use those features if i want just so far i haven't had to which is great so do i recommend putting solar pv on your house i absolutely do it's great fun it's great for the environment it's great for your pocket um long term and this is it i don't think the savings i'm making now in the first second third year etc i don't think any of that really matters it's a long-term view of getting your energy for free because as the rates of electricity go up, and you can see from this graph how they've gone up in the past, if they continue going that way, instead of being 13 pence a kilowatt hour, it's going to be 25, it's going to be 30, 35 pence a kilowatt hour uh, at home. So the more I can generate myself and be less reliant on the grid, the cheaper my future bills will be, and that's where the savings are. The savings are in the future. But on top of that, I'm getting hot water without oil um, being burnt in my boiler. I'm getting free energy into the car. And we're back to only spending uh, about £30 a month on electricity, which is absolutely fantastic. And this is in winter. I can't wait to see what it's going to be like in the summer. So even though I've only got a 3.9 kilowatt P output system um, with an inverter of 3.6, I'm still getting some really good benefits from it. If I was doing it again and I had the space on the roof, yeah, I, I would put more on. I would oversize the array so that in winter conditions I'm still getting more generation. So if I could have another two panels, four panels, six panels, fantastic. What next for me? Well, as I said, I want to implement some automation for the heating of the hot water because it is a pain turning the switch on manually. Uh, the other thing is, yeah, I, I do think already, uh, I'm only a couple of months in, but I reckon I'll add a couple of panels to the configuration. They might not be in perfect uh, positions, but I think it would be worth adding a couple of panels at a later point. Battery. Should I have put a battery on the system? Well, well, this is it. Um, I'm already saving a large proportion of my electricity costs. So adding a decent sized battery onto the system would have effectively doubled the cost of the installation. And for me, doubling the cost, but not doubling the benefit, wasn't really worth it to me. So yes, it's annoying that overnight there's still one kilowatt hour of electricity being consumed by myself. And if I had a battery, then that would be for free. I'm never going to see a day where I have used no electricity from the grid. So from that fun point of view, I'm not going to benefit from that. And that I think is what would be my main benefit from having a battery i would see those fun times of having any consumption of electricity from the grid so yes it would optimize my solution yes it would mean i'm less reliant on the grid but the savings for me just weren't worth it so they don't make sense on paper that to have the battery for another four or five thousand pounds i'm not getting the same payback uh, the payback I honestly don't know how long it would take, but instead of 10 years, we're talking 20 or 30 years to get the payback for putting a battery in. So will I put one in at some point? Do you know? I think I will. Um, probably I'll put a battery in when I add a couple more panels. And the reason for that is because it is great fun and hopefully the price of the batteries will come down. So at the point I add the panels, the panels will be better and also the batteries will be cheaper. 
So if you're considering solar PV on your roof and you've got the opportunity to do it and you've got the space, definitely go for it. I've been having some conversations with other people about what they're generating. And yeah, if you're not completely south facing or in a really good prime position for solar and you've got some shading, then you won't be generating as much at all. So if you're putting a 3.9 kilowatt system on the roof and you're not in such a perfect position as me, you won't be generating as much. So you've got to accept that you're going to be generating less. So you either need more panels to compensate for that and have a lot more on the roof, or you've got to accept that the benefits you're going to get are going to be less. If you've got a roof that's in the right position for solar, then it's crazy not to take advantage of it. Forget whether you've got any tariffs or not and you're getting any money back. Ugh, I'm really not thinking about that at all. I definitely would go ahead without the tariffs. Uh, it is great fun to have it on the roof. It does save me enough money. I'm happy with it as a solution for saving me electricity in the future. And anything I get, if uh, if I do get my application through in time for the FIT payments, then that's a bonus in my mind. Uh, my application is in, and we'll see what happens. So on usage, uh, if I show you this graph here, this is showing the amount of energy that uh, I've been generating on the solar throughout February. And you can see it rising, and it's rising because the days are getting longer and the weather's been getting better. So there's a good example of the increase in energy that I'm generating on the solar. Uh, on a peak day where it's perfect, you can see this gorgeous curve of it. Uh, as soon as the sun hits the panels, it starts to rise very, very quickly, reaches peak power quite quickly, and then stays there while the sun is overhead, and then uh, drops down at the end of the day. And here I can show you another one where the days are longer, and you can see that the uh, amount of peak generation lasts longer throughout the day. I hope that little update has been helpful to those that are interested in solar PV. And thank you again for everyone that watches the channel, everyone that's subscribed. Take care for now and see you again soon. Bye bye.